Hello everyone. My name is Rupa Paik and today I will be talking about advancements in cardiomyocyte differentiation that enable the investigation of disease phenotypes. As an overview, I will touch upon the processes of derivation of new induced pluripotent stem cell lines, also known as IPSC lines, characterization of these lines, and their differentiation into cardiomyocytes. I will also focus on disease modeling process and assay platforms by using two case studies, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, commonly known as HCM, and dilated cardiomyopathy, commonly known as DCM. This is some background on our company's stem cell theranostics. The company was founded in 2011 by Dr. Joseph Wu, Dr. Bobby Robbins, and Dr. Andrew Lee. The technology currently used as stem cell theranostics, or SCT, was developed in Dr. Joe Wu's lab. Dr. Wu is a cardiovascular surgeon and the director of the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute. He has pioneered a large number of publications in the area of cardiovascular research. Our mission at SCT is to accelerate the discovery and development of novel therapies for heart disease using patient-derived preclinical models. To achieve this, we have established a biobank of more than 100 patient-specific IPSCs in partnership with the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute. So why focus on cardiovascular diseases? As this graph from a recent report from the American Heart Association shows, heart disease is a leading cause of death in over 700,000 people, a highly significant number than deaths caused by cancer and other conditions. There are several causes of heart diseases, as you see listed on the right-hand side of this slide. They range from ischemia, hypertension, drug toxicity, infections, and genetic problems such as HCM, DCM, and CPVT. Today, we will be focusing on HCM and DCM. Inherited heart diseases can be divided into four types. Channelopathies, which are a heterogeneous group of disorders resulting from the dysfunction of ion channels located in the membranes of cells, in our case, heart muscle cells. Catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, CPVT, which is the rhythm disorder of the ventricles of the heart. Arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, ARVD, which is also a type of cardiomyopathy with defect in the desmosomes. And fourth, cardiomyopathies, which is a disorder characterized by abnormal heart muscle, leading to a compromised function of the heart. This slide shows proof via several publications that the IPSC technology has enabled in vitro disease modeling. The derivation of induced pluripotent stem cells from adult somatic cells by Dr. Shinya Yamanaka and Dr. Jamie Thompson in 2007 have enabled scientists to create disease-specific cellular models for various applications, including drug screening. The top right panel shows an example from Dr. Joe Wu's publication that DCM cardiomyocytes show contraction defects and arrhythmias similar to those seen in patients. And the lower right panel shows that patient-derived cardiomyocytes can predict clinical cardiotoxicity, as seen here with cisapride sensitivity in patients with existing heart conditions. This slide describes the disease modeling workflow. As a startup company, our first goal was to establish standardized SOPs 
reagents, and processes that are consistent and reproducible. We have these processes in place for IPS derivation, characterization, banking, and also for cardiomyocyte differentiation. After obtaining samples of fibroblasts and peripheral blood mononuclear cells, PBMCs, from the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute Biobank, we reprogram them using thermo cytotune Sendai virus reprogramming kit. We use the protocol provided in the kit, and both with fibroblasts and PBMCs, we get a decent number of colonies with our healthy as well as disease somatic cells. We also use thermo antibodies for characterization of our IPS cells. We routinely culture our cells in essential aid or E8 medium. All our master banks and working cell banks are also derived in essential aid medium. Our routine go-to product for cardiomyocyte differentiation is Thermos PSC cardiomyocyte differentiation kit. This works well for most of our cell lines. For some difficult cell lines, we have to tweak the kit with our own growth, growth factors or small molecules. This slide and the next four slides describe the various assays that we use to measure the disease phenotype in cardiomyocytes. The first one is cell imaging. In this assay, cardiomyocytes are incubated with various fluorescent probes or labeled antibodies and subjected to fluorescence microscopy and high content screening in order to assess cell structure, organization, and cell health. The right panel shows that cardiomyocytes are stained positive for CTNT and alpha actinin. And the third panel, or the lowest panel, is a merged image. The lower panel here shows how we conduct image analysis on a high throughput platform using cell segmentation program. Electrophysiology is another assay for measuring phenotypes. In this assay, cardiomyocytes are plated onto multi-electrode array or MEA plates. Electric activity is captured and analyzed as field potential duration, FPD, before and after drug addition across the cardiac syncytium. This little video will actually show beating cells that have been plated on the MEA plate, and the black lines are those electrodes that are visible through the microscope. The lower panel shows how data is obtained in the form of tracing. We can measure FTD, T waves, spike amplitudes, and many other parameters using such readouts. The panel on the left shows the correlation between echocardiogram, ECG, MEA readouts, and patch clamp recordings of ion channels. This slide shows analysis of fraud traces demonstrating that high doses of a compound E4031, which is a heart-type potassium channel blocker, can induce arrhythmic events as compared to those in controlled cardiomyocytes. This slide shows calcium transient assessment. Cardiomyocytes are loaded with fluorophore, a fluorescent calcium indicator. Spontaneous calcium transients are then captured from single cells, or as shown here, a well average using high content imaging. Once you play this video, you will notice the calcium transients appearing as bright sparks from time to time throughout the video. This slide shows single cell contraction assay. 
cardiomyocytes are plated on top of hydrogel with embedded fluorescent microsphere. The contraction of the cardiomyocyte is translated into force based on the vectorial displacement of the microsphere. The left-hand side video is the bright field image of one cardiomyocyte plated on these hydrogels, and the right side video is Texas red. This slide describes hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM. This is a common hereditary disorder affecting one in 500 people worldwide and is linked to heart failure, arrhythmia, and sudden cardiac death. Over 500 mutations have been identified for 20 plus genes for HCM. In order to develop an HCM disease model, Family cohort was identified within the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute Biobank. Fibroblasts and PBMC samples were obtained, and iPSCs were generated, expanded, and characterized as described in the previous slides. iPSCs were then differentiated into cardiomyocytes. The MYH7 mutation was confirmed by DNA sequencing and disease and control iPSC cardiomyocytes were evaluated for the presence of HCM phenotype. As you can see here, for the disease modeling case study of HCM, fibroblast and PBMC samples were obtained from the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute. In this case, we had one HCM patient with R663H MYH7 mutation and a healthy donor, and one HCM patient with R145W TNNI3 mutation and a healthy donor. This slide describes the process of derivation of new iPS cell lines from somatic cells. You can see the photos as we move from left to right. The first one on the left shows CD71 positive cells derived from PBMCs in culture. We used blood reprogramming medium along with specific growth factors to culture the cells in suspension and then transfuse them with cytotune sendai virus for reprogramming. Once reprogramming is successful, IPS colony start developing and attach at the bottom of the plate. The medium is then transitioned from blood medium to essentialate medium. The second photo shows small colonies at day 10, and as they progress, they get larger and more organized, as you can see in the third photo of colonies at day 18. The last photo on the right is of newly derived IPS cell line at passage 2, after picking a representative clone on day 28. This slide shows the characterization of newly derived iPS cell lines. As you go across each row from left to right, for specific cell lines, you can see that we characterize the cell lines based on morphology, presence of self-renewal markers, such as TRA160 and SSCA4. We also use intracellular markers, such as NANOG and OCT4, uh, which are not shown here. And for each cell line, based on the project, we either check for the presence of ecto, meso, and endoderm markers to establish pluripotency, or we test for the ability of the iPS cells to differentiate into cardiomyocytes. We also confirm the presence of normal karyotypes, and most importantly, we confirm specific mutations in the disease cell lines by sequencing. We then create master banks and working cell banks for all of the iPS cell lines. This slide shows the cardiomyocyte differentiation process. If you follow the images from left to right, you will see that the first image is of iPSCs transition from essential 8 medium to PSC cardiomyocyte differentiation medium. 
The second image is of cardiomyocytes at day four in culture. And you can see that the morphology of the iPS cells is beginning to change to reflect the initiation of the differentiation process. The third image is of cardiomyocytes at day 10 in culture. Majority of the cells in culture have acquired the cardiomyocyte morphology, and some beating areas are seen at this point. The last image is cardiomyocytes in culture at day 21. And at this point, there are several large beating areas seen in the culture. Many researchers use cardiomyocytes from day 30 onwards for their experiments. In fact, there was an interesting publication by scientists from Takeda Pharmaceuticals that indicates that day 30 cardiomyocytes are useful for day 6 screening, and day 30 and 90-day-old cardiomyocytes are appropriate differentiation stage for morphological assays. It is important to note that cardiomyocytes do mature while in culture, and their responses to drugs may vary based on their age. This slide shows two videos of beating cardiomyocytes. The panel on the left shows a monolayer or syncytium, and the panel on the right shows cells at a higher magnification where you can see the beating of individual cells as well as beating of cells in clumps. This slide shows optimization of cardiomyocyte differentiation process. We have established differentiation protocols that enable the routine generation of 75% or higher cardiomyocyte purity as determined by CTNT staining using the thermal cardiomyocyte staining kit. The left top panel shows staining using NKX 2.5. The top right panel shows that cells are stained positive for CTNT. The lower panels show nuclear staining and a merge of all of the others. On the right side, you can see a graph that shows quantitation of CTNT positive cells as con in control as well as in HCM cardiomyocytes. This slide shows a comparison between normal cardiomyocytes and HCM derived cardiomyocytes. As you can see from the images, when the cells are stained with CTNT, shown as green fluorescence, and nuclear stain shown as blue, the HCM cardiomyocytes in the middle panel show a clear enlargement in the cell size as compared to that in the control. The panel on the extreme right shows a bar graph with comparison of the cell size, and you can see a significant increase in the cell size of the HCM cardiomyocytes. This slide shows that cardiomyocytes derived from HCM patients display arrhythmic beating. The top right panel shows one electrode measurement as a representation of multiple electrodes in the MEA plate. The black trace shows that the controlled cardiomyocytes have a consistent beat, whereas the red trace for HCM cardiomyocytes shows significant variability in the beat period. The lower left panel is a plot of beat period versus time, and the lower right panel shows the COV, or coefficient of variation, of the beat period. As you can see, the fibroblasts derived from HCMs show significant variability versus control, and the cardiomyocytes derived from CD71 positive cells also show a difference, but it's not as striking. It is important to note that not all mutations present a strong phenotype, but they do present similar patterns. This slide shows differences between control and HCM cells 
measured on a different platform in the form of calcium transients. The plots show fluorescent intensity measured in time and normalized to a baseline. And as you can see from the graph, there are missed beats in the HCM cardiomyocytes as compared to the controls. This slide describes dilated cardiomyopathy. This is a hereditary cardiac disorder that affects 1 in 1,500 people worldwide and is characterized by progressive dilation, dyspnea, arrhythmia, and sudden death. This disorder is the most common reason for heart transplant. For this disorder, a three-generation family cohort was recruited to the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute. TBNC samples were obtained, and iPSCs were generated, expanded, and characterized as I have described in the previous slide. The TNNT2 mutation was confirmed by DNA sequencing, and then cardiomyocytes were generated. Disease and controlled cardiomyocytes were then evaluated for the presence of disease phenotypes. This slide shows optimization of cardiomyocyte differentiation process in the DCM model. The left panel shows that cells stain positive for CTNT. In the right panel, you can see a graph that shows quantitation of CTNT positive cells in both control and DCM cardiomyocytes. This slide shows a comparison of calcium transients between normal cardiomyocytes and DCM cardiomyocytes. As you can see in the left panel, normalized fluorescence is measured as a function of time in normal cardiomyocytes. The continuous line is the baseline measurement and the dashed line represents isoproternol or isotreatment. DCM cardiomyocytes in the right panel show slower calcium transients and reduced response to adrenergic stimulation as compared to the control cardiomyocytes. We have successfully derived a line from fibroblasts and CD71 positive cells obtained from normal donors and patients with hypertrophic and dilated cardiomyopathy. These iPS cell lines express self-renewal and pluripotency markers and can differentiate into cardiomyocytes using a variety of protocols, including the Thermo Fisher PSC cardiomyocyte differentiation kit. These differentiation protocols enable the routine generation of 25% of higher pure cardiomyocytes as determined by CTNT staining. Cardiomyocytes derived from patients with 663H mutation in MYH7 recapitulate many of the hallmarks of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, including cellular enlargement, arrhythmic beating, and irregular calcium transients. Cardiomyocytes derived from patients carrying the R173W mutation in TNNT2 display many of the disease characteristics of dilated cardiomyopathy, including slower beat rate, slower calcium transient, and reduced response to adrenergic stimulation. Patient-derived cardiomyocytes, therefore, are a powerful tool for cardiac disease modeling, target identification, and drug discovery. I would like to thank Veronica Sanchez and her team in the IPSC Disease Modeling Group and Jason Lamb and his team in the Assays and Screening Group at SCT. I would also like to thank the listeners and the viewers of this webinar. Thank you and have a good day.